opportunity to greet the children of the Lord in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Um, we will be discussing the topic of the ministry of Jesus Christ. We will be looking at the ministry of Jesus Christ, what it meant to the people that he was ministering to. But perhaps before we even get to our text, let us consider that the word ministry on its own, it implies service. The word ministry outside of service does not exist. In other words, for you to be a minister, you must be someone who carries out a service. You cannot claim the role of a minister without looking at being a servant of the people. In other words, ministry has nothing to do with leadership more than it has everything to do with serving the people whom we are set to lead. So, so we will be looking at the ministry of Jesus, looking at how he served men and how he was of service to the people whom he was called to, to save. Um, we are reading together from the book of Luke. We are looking at Luke chapter 7. We will be reading verses 11 up unto 16. Luke 7 um, verse 11 to 16. And it reads as follows. And it came about soon afterwards that he went to a city called Nain, and his disciples were going along with him, accompanied by a large multitude. Now, as he approached the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a sizable crowd of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he felt compassion for her, and he said to her, Do not weep. And he came up and touched the coffin, and the bearers came to a halt. And he said, Young man, I say unto you, Arise. And the dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. And the fear gripped them all, and they began glorifying God, saying, A great prophet has arisen amongst us, and God has visited his people. Let us close our eyes as we pray. Our Father in heaven, we have read your word. Speak to us, we are your children. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. The book of Luke is a gospel that is filled with the love of God. The book of Luke is written by the physician, a companion of Paul, a friend of Paul in sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. The gospel of Luke is, is written by a man who is considered a Gentile. He is perhaps the only Gentile author of the New Testament. And, 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 and Luke is a man who has seen the goodness of the Lord through hearing about him. And he's a man, because he is a, a physician, he has seen and has focused on, on, on how Jesus healed the sick, how Jesus helped the poor. He, he looks at, at the philanthropic um, um, point of view of, of, of Jesus Christ. He doesn't consider um, 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 the actions as themselves, but he looks at the intent behind, um, behind, behind the actions of Jesus Christ. So in other words, when Luke was writing his gospel, he was not, he was not excited by the miracles, but he was, he was more pleased to see what these miracles meant to the people that Jesus was performing them for. Luke writes this book, he writes it for an audience of Gentiles. The book of Luke, the way it is presented, it is, it is, it is classified as one of the, um, uh, the, 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 the best books in the Old Testament, looking at the language that he used, looking at how the book is compartmentalized, looking at, 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 at how the book is presented. The book was presented in a way that it can be universally accepted. So in other words, the book is able to be accepted by the Jews because it gives us Jesus Christ as the Messiah. But not only does it give us Jesus Jesus Christ as the Messiah, but it gives us a Jesus who is filled with compassion, a Jesus who cares for the Gentiles, a Jesus who cares for the sorrows of men. So in other words, when Luke brings us to the table and he presents this Jesus to us, he presents a Jesus who is able to fit in our circumstance, a Jesus who is able to relate with our struggles, a Jesus who is a part of man, but not a Jesus who is a God who stands up from afar, but he is a Jesus who is actively involved in the struggles of men. In other words, when Luke was writing the book, he was focusing on Jesus being amongst men. Luke writes this book to a predominantly um, um, Gentile community. Now, now, when he writes this book, because the Jews had this thing that the Gentiles are not saved, he was presenting this book such that they may see themselves in Jesus Christ. He writes the book such that they may have something to grab on and say, this man healed um, people that were considered unclean. This man ate with sinners. This man, this man found joy being around sinners. That is why when you read the book of Luke, you will come across him pointing out that Jesus was helping um, um, the outcasts of society. He will point out that Jesus was helping 
young women, he will point out Jesus was helping and was helping children because his pure intent is to say that Jesus cares for the underdog. Jesus is for everyone who sees themselves as nothing in the community. In other words, the book of Luke is not addressed for people who see themselves above community, but he addresses the book to people who see themselves nothing in their communities. And he says to them that although the world does not see you as nothing, but Jesus cares about you. And this is the whole, this is the whole, this is the whole um, 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 idea behind the book of Luke is that he presents to us a Jesus a Jesus who cares. He presents to us a Jesus, a Jesus who feels our sorrows. He presents to us a Jesus, a Jesus who is actively involved in the struggles of men. In other words, when Luke presents God unto us, he is simply saying the God that we serve is not a God that stands from afar, but is a God who is willing to get his garments dirty. He's a God who is willing to roll up his sleeves in aiding mankind. He is a God who is willing and is going to do so in aiding the, the sufferings of of people in other words when Luke presents Jesus he presents him in the way that it was meant to be that Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost when he comes to seek the lost he does not look for them in the in the in the in the flock of those who claim to be lost but he goes out into searching the Gentiles he does not he does not bother himself with those the Pharisees who claim that they have they have received the word of the Lord and they are the holy ones amongst these people but he goes and he sits with tax collectors he goes and he mingles with 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 women with issues of blood he goes and he 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 mingles with with my mom, my mom, with with, 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 with rulers who are not of the Jewish um, 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 descent. It is because Luke was trying to impress us, um, um, to write here, to impress in our memories that the man that we, he is presenting is a man who cares for the needs of others. Yeah, 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 yeah. The story narrates that after Jesus had, had healed the centurion slave from a distance, Jesus meets a man who is, has power. This man says to him, listen, my slave is ill. And the time it will take for us to get there, it will not be enough to save him. This man says, it's just, I just need you to say the word, and I know he shall be well. Yeah. Jesus marveled by what this man says. He says, I have not found such faith among the Jews. Jesus is not concerned about going there because he knows his presence is not needed there. But his presence will be needed in the part that we have read, in the pericope that we read. The Bible says, now after he has done this, with a large multitude with him, he entered into the city of Nain. Now when he enters the city of Nain, he finds that there is a funeral going on in the city of Nain. There is a multitude that comes with Jesus out of, 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 of seeing the miracles that he has done. And there is a multitude approaching Jesus, leaving the city of Nain, carrying a dead man, carrying a hope, the hopes of a mother. They see, um, um, so the encounter is between two crowds, a crowd that comes bearing witness of the goodness of God and there is a crowd that comes and asks the question where is God when I suffer and the two will meet at the gate of the city of Nain so 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 the story then I want you to imagine with me they walk they walk they hear a crowd of, of mourners coming from that side they are crying approaching them on the on the other side of the gate there is a crowd singing with joy that says the Lord is with us and they are both approaching each other the two sounds co come I'm, I'm clashing against the other. The one is, is presenting joy, the other is presenting sadness. But when they meet at the gate of night, the two sons meet the one who had carried the hopes of his mother and the son who carries the hope of the world. The two of them meet at the gate of Nain. And the story goes and says, and Jesus saw the crowd coming with him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Perhaps let me give you a brief understanding of the city of Nain. The city of Nain is not far from Jerusalem. Um, so in other words, anyone who lived in the city of Nain probably could not afford living okay. in, in Jerusalem. Yeah. Because the city of Nain, the setting that looks give us, that looks gives us, is a setting of a small town. Yeah. In fact, a small village. Mm -hmm. And this setting that he presents to us, he does this and says, and almost all of the village was with the woman yeah. who was carrying the dead body. The reason he does this, he wants to impress in our minds that this town was a very small town and, and therefore these people financially 
probably did not have the means to survive a comfortable life. They had to work on a daily basis. I'm trying to draw a picture of how afflicted this woman was when she lost her son. So Luke gives us and says that this city is near Jerusalem. Now Jerusalem is a city of splendor. It is believed that it is the city that holds the presence of God. In other words, those who lived in Jerusalem had money. Those who lived in Jerusalem could afford a lavish lifestyle. Those who lived in Jerusalem had, had, had enough to sustain them. But those that lived in the city of Nain, they tried to live on a daily basis. So, so Jesus sees this funeral procession going on. And, and it says there are two crowds that are with them. I'll touch, this one, I'll touch on this one later. And, and now, now, now Jesus sees the woman. He sees this woman who, who is a widow. One. Two, she has lost her son. Now, the position of a woman in those days was, was that a woman shall not, um, a, a woman cannot serve herself in, 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 a woman cannot be actively involved in her well-being such that if she did not have a son or she did not have a husband, she would firstly be stripped of her belongings. Number two, she would have to beg so that she can survive. In other words, the woman cannot provide on her own. But Luke presents us this woman who he says she is, first of all, a widow. Now, a widow, a, a widow, she did not have time probably to mourn for her husband until her belongings were taken from her. The only thing that kept whatever she had in her position was the fact that her son was alive. Because this boy was the boy who was going to carry um, 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 the bloodline of this family. It was the boy who was going to carry the family. Now, now, when the boy dies, then the things change for the woman for the West because not only now has she, does she have to mourn for her husband, but she has to mourn for her lost son and not only for her lost son, but she has to cry for her lost belongings because now she is a nobody in in the community and this is the woman that Jesus had compassion for now now when 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 the woman lost her son the story says a large crowd was with her the community carried the, the dead body for her and she was besides the crowd now an interesting part is that the crowd that was carrying the dead body with them they were carrying um, 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 the hopes of the woman with them, they were carrying the only plan of survival for the woman. But this plan of survival had failed. Her hopes had been shattered. So in other words, they were carrying out her broken dreams out of the city of Nain. And, and, and because she was a widow and she had no children left, and she was probably too old to even have or be remarried again. So the problem would be then, this woman, as, as they, they leave the city carrying her dead son, they are leaving the city also with, with, with her contribution to society because now she'd be a nobody in the community. So as she leaves the city of Nain, she's leaving the city of Nain, not having anything. She's leaving the city of Nain for the last time as a member of the community. And when she returns after burying her son, she will return as a nobody, yeah. an outcast in society. She will return as a nobody, an old widow in the society who, is no, who has nothing and will have to live by begging people for her to survive on a daily. Jesus sees the plight of this woman and he feels compassion for her. He looks at her and he sees the large, commun the large community carrying pretending to care for her as they carry her broken hopes, as they carry her dead son out of the city of Nain. Friends, perhaps let me say to you, when you are carrying your dead hopes, there will be many people that present themselves as if they care for you. But all they are doing, they are escorting you out of their communities. They are escorting you to a road of being an outcast. They are ostracizing you in the process. But what, what you see is that there is a large crowd, a whole city that is here mourning with the woman, crying that she has lost everything. People who can help her, but because the community doesn't allow, the system doesn't allow them to help her. They only can do, the only thing that they can do is to cry carrying her hopes out of the city. They can only cry carrying her, 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 her position in a community outside the city. In other words, what I'm saying to you today that the people that we see around us probably the only thing they can do for us it is to help us bear the burdens of our dead hopes. But when we meet Jesus at the gate of name, he comes to restore the woman's dignity in the community. He comes to restore the hopes that have been broken. He comes to bring back the hope that has been lost. Jesus comes to the city of Nain on the business of bringing back this woman to the community that which she deserves to be in.
The Bible says this woman was with her family for the last time. This woman was with her village for the last time, carrying out the dead son's body, approaching the gate of nine. But the Bible says Jesus saw the woman. There is a large crowd, but Jesus looks at the woman and he feels compassion for her. There is a large crowd, people are crying, but Jesus only sees the woman. Jesus focuses on the woman. Allow me to say at this hour that when we are weeping and when we are crying, when we carry our lost hopes, yes, Jesus does not focus on the whole world, but he sees our needs. He focuses directly upon, uh, on us. He fixes his eyes on us. And he says, and he says, I am able to restore this child back to his goodness. And he focuses and he is filled with compassion yeah. over the woman. Jesus decides to act. Jesus decides to act. He goes to the woman and he says to her, listen, do not weep. I can see that you are crying. Do not weep. In fact, before I get there, perhaps allow me to say that amongst the audience that carried the dead boy's body would be the same man that would go back to take her belongings from her. There are some people in your life that will pretend to be with you as long as you are still carrying your hopes. But when they return from burying your dreams, they are the same people that are looking at your possessions. But do not be dismayed, for when you get to the gate of the city, there you will meet a man who is able to restore you back to your possession. I said, I said, Jesus fixes his eyes on the woman, and he is filled with compassion for her. And he tells her, listen lady, do not weep, do not weep. Now, now, usually when someone utters these words in a time of your struggle, it is only to show that they understand that you are going through a tough time. But they say this as if they are saying, look, it is difficult now, but at some point things will get better. And when they say this, they say this um, 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 from an inactive point of view. They are saying this because they, 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 they feel sorry for you, but not because they can actually help you. So, 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 so Jesus says to the woman, listen, lady, do not weep. Lady, I see the tears running down your eye, your, 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 your cheeks. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I see the pain that you have in your heart. Yes, sir. <laughs> Jesus did not look at the woman and was just convinced by the tears. But he saw the groanings of her heart. He saw the many sleepless nights in her journey while she was mourning for her child. He saw the losses that she would incur in the future because her son has died. This woman probably was the only thing that gave her hope when her husband died at an old age. It was that there is a son who will at least keep her until, he, until she dies. So in other words, when the woman looked at the son, she looked at her retirement plan. She looked at some vessel that was going to keep her until her last breath. But now when she has to bury her last, um, 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 her last hope, she is then afflicted and she realizes that the world is now beginning to fall apart. The mountains are falling on me. Everything is now resting on my shoulders and everything that I have will no longer be mine. But Jesus says, do not weep. Do not weep. Wipe away those tears. Do not cry. Usually when Jesus says, do not worry or do not weep, something great is about to happen. When Jesus calms people down, something great is about to happen. Peace be still, the storms kept quiet. When Jesus calms things down, something great is going to happen. When Jesus calms you down amidst the storms of your life, something great is about to happen. It is, it is, it is said that this message probably comes to you at a time where you are going through a loss. It, it is a time where, 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 where the pandemic has struck you so bad that you have lost your employment. You have lost your hope and your source of income. It comes at a time where you have lost six, seven family members due to the fire. Um, 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 the pandemic, it comes at a time where your marriage is falling apart because finances are no longer going in and there is problem in the household. But, but allow me to say, because Jesus is approaching the city of name, things will be fine. But for the time being, do not weep. Jesus says to the woman, do not weep. And immediately he shifts focus to the dead boy. Remember now, we are only looking at Jesus and the woman. The crowds are silent. No one is mentioning the crowds that are wailing. I'm, I'm, I'm showing that they are here. But the focus is on Jesus and the woman. Jesus then looks at the dead body. He holds, um, um, the, he stops the funeral and he says, wait a minute. The man carrying the body fell to an halt. Now Jesus is a Jew. 
And, and, and the city of Nain is near to Jerusalem. Yes, sir. Yeah. So it is good to assume that the people that were here understood Jewish customs. Mm. Yes, For Jesus to touch a dead body, Jesus was, was, was defiling himself yes. as a clean man. Yes. When he touched the body, he declared himself unrighteous amongst the Jews. When he touches the body, the coffin of this dead man, he was, he, was, he was taking away that which made him clean. I can imagine the crowd that he was with when he was entering the gate of Nain. They probably cringed their teeth because they saw the one whom they thought was holy has now been declared as unclean. The one whom they looked at and saw the hopes of men has now become unclean. He is now filthy because he has touched a dead body. Allow me to say Jesus was willing to compromise his holy state so that a woman can be saved. Jesus was willing to compromise his position in society so that a woman can find hope. Jesus is willing to compromise his position for your sake. He was so willing to compromise his position that he did not find it robbery that though he is equal with God to take upon the form of a sinner. In other words, when Jesus comes into the scenario, he is completely willing and he is is fully engaged in the process of giving us hope and therefore he strips off his garment of holiness puts on the garment of, of unfilthiness so that he can redeem a sinner from his struggles so that he can bring up a sinner from the problems that he, have, where he is facing <laughs> Jesus touches the coffin the funeral comes to an halt I can imagine there was silence in the audience the Bible says there was a large multitude but we are only given insight to Jesus interacting with the dead body he says to him, young man, arise. Ah, yeah. <laughs> young man, arise. Right. When Jesus raises the dead boy, he does not do that so that people can say he is able to raise dead bodies. Right. But he raises the young man so that the mother may have something to live on. Yes, he doesn't raise the dead boy so that people can glorify his name. Mm. But he raises the dead boy so that the mother does not feel lonely. Yeah. When Jesus acts on our behalf, he does not do this so that everything may we may look at him and say, yes, he has done great things. But he does this so that you and I mm. can feel that we have benefited from him being in our presence. Yes, sir. <clears throat> when Jesus, when Jesus touches the thing, he says, young men, arise. Perhaps the Lord is speaking to young men today of South Africa who are busy terrorizing women in the streets, raping them, murdering them, killing them. Oh. Jesus is simply saying, young men, arise. Yeah. The time for your dead sleep is now over. Yeah, it is sir. time for you to arise and to act. Well, yeah. Young men, arise. Jesus is probably appealing here to young men who have been useless in their households. Yes, Jesus is appealing to them and saying, young men, arise. arise. South Africa is facing a problem yeah. where women are wondering, am I, am I next? But all Jesus is saying this morning is that young men, arise. It is time for you to become an active member in society. The time that you spent dead in the coffin as, as a rapist has now come to an end. Young men arise. The time that you are spending terrorizing the community it is now time for the young men to arise. Jesus is appealing to someone this hour that young men arise. The time for you to be useless in your community. Young men arise. The mother who is the land South Africa is weeping. The young man is dead. Busy terrorizing the streets. Committing all sorts of crimes. But it's time for young men to start rising. Yes, sir. Young men, arise, Jesus says. The Bible says, and the dead man began to sit up and he started to speak. Yes, sir. <laughs> Jesus says, young men, arise. The dead man begins to speak. He starts to sit up, stretch himself because he is no longer dead. Okay. When you have an encounter with Jesus yeah. and he touches you personally, your life will never be the same again. There is a woman who was known to have had the issue of blood for 12 years, bleeding nonstop for 12 years, but when she meets Jesus, she touches in close contact with the Lord. Her life was never the same. There is a woman who is accused of adultery. She comes in the presence of Jesus. In close proximity, the life was never the same when she left his presence. There is a woman sitting at a well who is known to be with people's husbands, but she meets Jesus and her life is no longer the same. A young boy in the city of Nain is dead lying in a coffin. Jesus meets the coffin and the boy's life is never the same. He can now testify and says, there is a man who rose me from the dead. And it says this is because my mother was feeling ill. In other words, when Jesus meets a person, your life can never be the same again. Yes, 
Jesus takes this young man, he begins to speak and to talk. The young man is then taken, presented to his mother. Jesus says, here is your son. Remember, Jesus said, do not weep. Now he gives a reason not to weep. Because everything that she thought she has lost has been now returned to her. Everything she had the potential of losing has now been given back to her. The guarantee that she had that was lost has now been restored to her. I said before, when a woman becomes a widow and has no children, no any potential to be married again, she loses her status in the community. Jesus was in the business of restoring back her image in the community. Jesus was in the business of restoring who she was in society. Jesus was in the business of bringing her back to her old self. Yes. Jesus was in the business of restoring a sinner. Yes. Jesus is in the, in the business today of restoring sinners like you and I. Yes. Jesus is in the business of bringing back hope in our lives. Yes, the, COVID, the pandemic has broken us. Yes, the pandemic has stolen our hopes. But because Jesus is, appearing the, is, is approaching the gates of the city of Nain, we have assurance that things will no longer remain the same. Yes. He will restore us back to that moment. But until that moment, let us not weep. Jesus takes the young man, presents him to his mother. And now we hear of the crowd. Okay. The multitudes that were watching this beautiful thing happening in front of them. As the one multitude was coming with songs of sadness, crying that a son has been lost in this nation. The village has probably lost a leader. The village has lost um, the source of income for a family. A family, the bloodline has been lost. The audience that was singing that song, crying tears. The mourners that were crying, probably even higher tears. The fake tears that were crying, approaching the gate of name to go bury the young man. Yes, start singing a song and they start to rejoice, saying yes, the presence of God is with men. Man, God has visited men. A mighty prophet has risen amongst us. Even those mourners who are mourning with a fake voice, they now rejoice authentically. They now rejoice with, with, with conviction because they have seen the wonders of the Lord. Perhaps someone is on a fake journey pretending to be saved, but when they meet Jesus, they start to profess the songs of Zion because they realize amongst them a prophet has been risen. Amongst them the glory of God has been shown. We have seen the presence of God amongst us. And there are those that come from seeing a miracle. Jesus raising a man who was sick. They come, they were also singing. That praise be to God. A prophet is amongst us. But perhaps some of them were there because they were following a crowd. But when they meet at the gate of name, the two songs that were different, the song of joy on the other hand, and the song of sadness, when they met at the gate of name, they all proclaim the same song. A mighty prophet has risen amongst us. And not only is the prophet amongst us, but the Lord has visited his people. The Lord is with his people. I said when I began, the book of Luke presents, presents Jesus to us as a man who is present in our struggles. When these people saw what Jesus did for the widow, all they could say is that the prophet of God is amongst men. And his presence is felt within us. Remember I said the city of Nain was, was close to Jerusalem, but it was not Jerusalem. When we read of Jerusalem, we learn it is the city that was believed to have the presence of God. The Jews praise this city because they know this is where the law of God abides. But when they get to the city of Nain, it is only now that they see the presence of God amongst men. They sing the songs of the presence of God outside the gates of Jerusalem because the presence of God comes with Jesus. A mighty prophet comes from the city of Jerusalem, bringing the good news to the city of Nain. When Jesus is on his way to your position, though the city that they may see as a beautiful city is the place they believe to have the presence of God, but when Jesus is in your vicinity, all they can stand to say is that the prophet of God is with men. The, 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 the ministry of Jesus all that the ministry of Jesus had was simply service to his people the book of Luke was written for young men and women who found themselves to be nothing in their communities the book of Luke was written for prostitutes who have been written out by the community the book of Luke has been written for criminals who have been seen as nothing in their communities and can be nothing good can come from them. The book of Luke is written for families that are known to be broken. The book of Luke is written for robbers and thieves. The book of Luke is written, the book of Luke is written 
for those that have been condemned by the world. The book of Luke is written for those that have been lost to the cause of man. But Jesus comes into the book of Luke to restore everything that man had known. Jesus comes into the book of Luke, of Luke to bring back everything that man deserves. Jesus comes into the book of Luke to cover the shame of, of, of the human race and he comes into our lives in the same manner. He is in the business of restoring our lives. Jesus, as long as he comes to the city of Nain, we should not weep. Let us keep our tears as we weep. We should not weep as if we do not have hope because Jesus is approaching the city of Nain. Amen. May we close our eyes as we pray at this moment. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you in a special way, Lord, that you are a God who bothers himself about our needs. We want to thank you, dear Lord, that you spent the time to come down to our level so that we may engage in your grace and we may experience your beauty. We ask in a special way, Lord, may you change the lives of those that are watching this thing, Lord. We ask that may you change their lives and may you have a stronghold on their lives that they may see. Though they are broken, Lord, they can still be restored, but only in your grace. This is what I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.